Hi guys. Just gonna start with the session very soon. Just gonna let you know this is a free consulting session. Ask me anything regarding admissions, scholarships, visa, jobs, whatever you're looking for. And uh, we're just waiting for more people to start joining in and then we're gonna start, all right? All right, Instagram already has a lot of people. Uh, I also am live on YouTube, by the way. So both at the same time, we're gonna be clarifying doubts from both of you guys. Hi guys, how are you guys doing? Hi Wamsi, hi Deepshika, hi Shubham. Hi, Modet. All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna start taking in questions. All right, so you can now start sending them in and I'm here for about uh, 25, 30 minutes and we'll, uh, we'll basically go forward with that. All right, guys. All right, okay. So let's start. So Dharm Prajapati asks, what about summer intake slots? Summer intake slots are more or less gone, Dharm. Sorry about that. You may be having to defer in most cases. Uh, there were some openings for late April and uh, late May, but I don't think that uh, those, those you know, would be opening up very soon right now because we're already in late April at this time. All right. So summer slots, I would not have a lot of hope for. Exceptional cases can happen, but uh, at the same time, I'm sorry to inform you, you may have to defer to the fall session, guys. All right, I'm gonna take one question from YouTube, one from um, Instagram. So from YouTube, they say, um, let's see, Ayesh, what is it like to study in the UK at this stage considering the worldwide economic slowdowns? Yeah, I think it's uh, still a pretty good time to study. There is really no reason to stop your education altogether simply because at this time, UK has started offering a post-study work, post -study work visa again as you may know, two to three years, depending on whether you're doing, uh, you know, undergraduate or graduate study. And um, again, you know, it, it, it really is, I think, one of the best times either way. All right. And they do have a path to the citizenship as well at this time, PR at least as well. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look at Instagram now. So one question for here. When will the fall slots be open? I'm making one more video on this. It will be live hopefully today, tonight, uh, this evening, hopefully. From the information we have received, you can expect a major opening in the month of May. I cannot tell you when, I cannot tell you how it will be, or you know, first week, second week, third, that's not something I can tell you, but it is scheduled, it will be there. And if you are actually monitoring at all times, generally, you know, in big openings, you should be able to get it without a doubt. All right. Um, all right, all right. Let's see a question from uh, YouTube this time. Over here we have, uh, we have uh, Gil Pavan who says, tomorrow is my interview. Any advice? Yes. Um, dress semi-formally or formally. Apart from that, uh, you know, make sure that you are confident. Confidence is key and prepare for the interview. If, you know, you need help, try to interview with someone who's already done this interview before. They would be able to train you or train with someone who's a consultant. We can do it for you as well. But in general, if you already have it tomorrow, you know, I'm not quite sure we can squeeze you in at this point. All right. Mm, let's see. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Uh, Himant says, I have five years of experience, but after graduation, I have six months before working. How much gap is good between graduation and working? Well, it depends on exactly what you are, uh, what you are going to be doing. If you're going for an MBA, for instance, the average work experience required is around five years. If you're going for engineering programs or MSBA or, you know, even programs like law, for instance, you may not even need work experience. You can directly go for it. There's really no difference as such in, in such cases. All right, guys. All right, let's do um, one from YouTube. Okay. Um, so Nida Ahmed says that in I-20, I have shown the funds in my bank account and the rest I have taken a student loan. In DS-160 under the sponsor, should I show personal funding or parents? So that depends essentially. Your DS-160 can be first off changed, right? And uh, DS-160 is something that you can always, you know, show difference in terms of funds from so in terms of the i20 i would suggest go with that if you if you already have uh, funds in your bank account that you've shown for i20 generally keep it the same but of course you know circumstances and situations situations always change so you don't always have to be right on in terms of your funds right as you've shown the university can be different as well right as long as you're meeting the minimum funds required and a little bit extra you're good right um Ria asks, how can we ask, uh, how can we answer low GRE questions? Let them know that, uh, you know, you could not prepare for GRE essentially, maybe because you started your preparation late or what happened was at the end of the day, when you had your test, you were sick, something of that sort happened, right? Which 
maneuvered you to not be able to get a score that you were getting or you expected to get, right? Generally, that is the case. You can just say something like that and get around it. It's really not a big issue. Most cases it may not even come up, by the way. All right. One from uh, YouTube now. So Nida says, thank you. No problem, Nida. We have uh, another one here. Preet Pandit asks, are there any universities which don't need GRE for graduate program for Jan 2024? That is the spring 24 intake for the US. Yes, there are many such universities, Preet. We will be updating our blog. It, this information will be made available to you for free. Just let the you know spring admissions start a little bit. And we're getting very close, by the way. So we will be updating that and we'll be showing you a whole list. There will be around 50, 60 universities that we end up with at the end of the day. So you will have a lot of choices, all right? All right. Um, Instagram, Instagram, let's see. So when may ask when will visa slots open for fall 23? I've already answered that. Minor openings are happening even as we speak, but major opening, you can expect one in May. All right. When in May, Alicia asks, I cannot answer. It's If we knew, we wouldn't have to develop so many algorithms or put so many people on it to continue monitoring at all times. It's just the case that we don't know and no one knows. The thing is, last to last year, Embassy started telling you guys when they will open up. That's what happened. Embassy told you guys when it will open up, the exact day as well. And the slots were open up, opened up for about four hours that day. Four hours is the longest period I've seen. But the website completely crashed. It crashed and no one was able to actually get a slot very easily at least. Or, you know, for us also, it was even with the sophisticated people that we have in our team, it was taking about 10 to 15 minutes to get a single slot simply because the website was com continually down. So since then, the embassy has decided that they would not tell you guys when these slots are opening, which I don't know if it does more good than harm, but it is their decision. And we have to respect that. We have to work accordingly only. So we'll never be able to tell you exactly when. We can only estimate based on our experience. That's it. All right. And uh, a video will be posted tonight according uh, for the same. So accordingly, you'll be able to get that. All right. Let's see here. Um, so Anthony Banerjee asks, robotics design and computer vision job scope. There's a lot of good jobs in these fields, actually. If, it depends on the area. I would say focus on the location you're going for. Uh, again, you know, now you have to tell me the country, but if you're going to the U.S., then, you know, there are some areas like, uh, you know, of course, the Bay Area. There's areas like New York. There's areas like Boston, who, which have which have very, very good job scopes for these, uh, for these you know, pos uh, positions. But at the end of the day, it depends on the country and the area. And as long as you're figuring that out, I think you should be good to go. Location, remember, is more important in, mo in most cases than the ranking of the university when it comes to getting jobs overseas. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, other one here. Let's see. So uh, I'm not going to be taking video requests right now. I would love to. I would love to do that when I'm only live on Instagram one day because, you know, what happens is YouTube guys would not be able to understand anything that's going on. So hopefully we will uh, talk, we'll do that in another session. Uh, Anna says, sending love from Nepal. Thank you so much, Anna. It's a pleasure to have you here. All right. Nikhil says, anyone knows if University of Ekron is good? I've never heard of this university personally. You can check it out on our website or on our phone application, but I generally haven't heard of it. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Furu Yuso says, hey, is an MS in me mechanical engineering worth it or should I specialize in a field? So my advice would be, it depends on exactly what you want to do. If you're not sure on what you want to exactly do in mechanical, there's a lot of fields that you can get into, right? For instance, if you're sure that you want to go into, you know, well, there's a lot of fields, but let's say that you are into vehicles and you really have a passion for, you know, engineering vehicles and building something new, then you take up that exact field, right? Again, mechanical is a very broad field, just like um, just like IT or computer science. You really just have to choose what you know at this point. If you don't know where you are exactly going to go, then you pick up the whole field. You go for just mechanical engineering. If you're sure you know that, okay, I only want to get into this specialization, then go for that specialization. It's completely fine. And you can always specialize in a field after going to the university and starting to work there as well, starting to study there as well. It's always possible. Don't worry about that. All right. Okay. Um, let's see the next one here. N now the slots for June to August will be open for F1 student visa. So those will be both fresher and rejected or only for freshers, Creative Appy says. Well, the slots at first will generally, at, from, from the last year's experience, I can tell you, is that they will generally first open for, let me just fix this, 
they will generally open for freshers first. But at the same time, it's not the case that they will only be for freshers. Minor openings may happen for refused candidates as well. That's what last year happened. So I'm only telling you based on my experience. I cannot tell you what will happen in the future, but based on my experience, this happened last year. This can happen again. And um, in terms of um, in terms of refused slots, minor openings will continue to happen though. And at the end, there's a bigger opening as well for a few slots. So you can always you know, expect a slot in August as such. All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Rohit, for your wishes. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see another one from YouTube this time. Um, so over here, Neeraj asks, hey, Yesh, I, have, I haven't received my decision from TAMU yet for MSCS. Should I wait or proceed with I-20 from some other college? Neeraj, if you know what you're doing, what you can even do is you can proceed with the I-20 from one university right now, get your visa slot booked. And by that time, if your admission comes in, you can change the admit. Sorry, you can change the visa, right, to that university. It's possible to do. But I would I would highly advise doing that because at the end of the day, if the opening happens and you miss it, you're in big trouble and you'll basically be at the end of the stage when you have to defer either. So don't wait for the university. The universities are strictly instructed by US Travel Docs teams and, and, and the embassy to you know release the decisions early. It's just that they're not doing it or you applied late. And uh, to me, that's that's not uh, that's not decent enough. You can even check uh, the YAMGRAD decisions page, admits rejects page we have. You can search on Google YAMGRAD admits and rejects. Once you search, or just search for admits and rejects, our website comes on the top. And then you check for TAMU. See if the other people have started getting admits. And if the answer is yes, you're probably on the wait list. In that case, I would go for the visa process for some other university with the other I-20 without thinking about it, right? All right, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, the other question over here is uh, Shubham Randeep. He says, please tell us about scholarship. Shubham, scholarships generally, the best scholarships are given out when you apply. So if your quality of the application is good and you file for a scholarship in that admissions process, generally the highest scholarships are through this process. However, there are external third party scholarships that you can apply to and they are still accepting admissions. You can certainly go for that. There's no stopping you for that. And even we are actually helping a couple of clients apply for those. And Many a times I've seen in previous years as well, these clients end up getting scholarships worth somewhere around $1,000 to $10,000 easily. It's very well possible. It just depends on where you're putting your time and money and effort. That's about it. All right. One second. I will just see. Uh, a lot of uh, questions has, have been sent during the session on Instagram. I will try to answer those later as well. Um, okay. All right. Aman says, Hindi mein bolo bhai. Hindi mein to bol lenge Aman. But the uh, dikkat ye hai ki... कुछ लोग थोड़े साउथ के भी हैं यहां पर जिनको हिंदी इतना नहीं समझ आता है तो हिंदी से थोड़ा सा इसलिए पीछे हट के चल रहे हैं अभी इस वीडियो में बट जरूर कभी बात करेंगे हिंदी में भी करेंगे यार सेशन आपके साथ ठीक है ऑलराइट नेक्स्ट वन ओवर हियर इज रितेश ही सेस सर प्लीज रोड मैप फॉर नॉन सीएस टू सीएस इन यूएसए फॉर मास्टर्स रितेश इट्स इजी वी डू इट फॉर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ एप्लीकेंट्स एवरी ईयर I think we specialize in it, I can tell you, because from a lot of fields, people want to go into CS. You just have to show that you as an applicant have had a lot of interest in CS. You've done a lot of work already, even though your field is not CS, but you're starting to work in that field or you're really, you know, you're indulging, you're doing your best to get into that field, right? You're, you're trying your best to get your foot in the door, essentially. That's what you have to see, to show. As long as you can show that, right? We have seen tremendous results. Sometimes even the minimum requirements have been waived off. Those are exceptional cases, but again, you know, I thought you would be interested in knowing that, All right? Okay, Instagram, let's see. Tanisha says, when can we expect slots for M1 refuse applicants? Tanisha, M1 is the same as F1, F2, J1, J2, and M2. All of your guys, uh, you guys' slots are the same. So if F1 refuse slots open, M1 also open, all right? If you're looking to overcome the interview, you can message me on my WhatsApp number. I will be uh, sharing it in the story after this uh, session ends. You can message me over there and we can tell you exactly how we can help you not only get the start, but also overcome the rejection. That's more, I'm more than happy to do that, right? Okay. Um, the legacy legendary channel says that I got called in for an interview after Dropbox. What does this mean? This means that they were not satisfied with the application for some reason and uh, they are skeptical whether you will return from the US back to your country, if you're going for a non-immigrant visa at least, 
So it's generally not the best sign, but at the same point in time, it's not a rejection either. So don't worry. Just uh, be confident, give it your best, and you'll be fine, okay? All right. Um, the next question we have over here. Uh, so right here, Northern Lights 193 says that college ranking with not uh, with not good location versus great location and decent college. What's your opinion? So Northern Lights, in this case, my answer would be it depends from a case to case. I mean, how bad is the ranking of the university, which is in a good location? We have to look at that. Is it that bad that you cannot secure a job or is it okay enough for you to actually get a job and maybe even a better opportunity than the good university, which is in a not so decent location, right? So it, it's really a trade-off. That's why we generally also, you know, create a whole report for such cases. We we connect with alumni, we see what's the you know situation been like in the last three years, and based on that, we do that. And I think you can also do this research yourself. A lot of it just involves, you know, checking our alumni network and connecting on applicants on LinkedIn as well, on YMGrad as well. And now we have launched a chat feature. You can literally just message people directly on the website and you can check who had gotten you know, admits from that university last three or four years ago and which person finalized and you can message them and you can see what what's their overview at this point, right? So that's possible if you just go ahead at, uh, you know, whamgrad.com or download our application, you can directly just message them. They just really have fun visa slots I've answered multiple times in this session. I will uh, refrain from saying that again for now. Uh, maybe towards the end, I'll uh, uh, repeat myself. All right, uh, Pravalika says, how is University of Utah for MSCS? University of Utah is good, very decent university, but not so good location. So I would look at alternative options if I had more admits. But otherwise, it's a good university. Don't be, worry about anything at uh, Utah. And um, most, uh, Mohammed Salad uh, asks, robotics and JHU is good for you as John Hopkins University. If you're getting that, don't leave it. Go for it. Don't worry, robotics, CS, uh, dental studies, whatever it is at JHU, you go for it. You don't ask questions about it. All right. Uh, let's see. Next one. What are the things to look for while booking flights? What are the best flight providers? Uh, Vignesh, I would say these change from year to year. You know, there's really no, uh, you know, you can fly via the, uh, you know, UAE route. You know, in Emirates, you can fly via the, um, you know, India Airlines route, which directly takes you to Air India route, which directly takes you to New York without even a gap, or you can go through China. It depends on essentially what you can even go through the UK. Depends on which flight is the cheapest. Generally, just go for the cheapest and make sure that you look out for the baggage because you're generally going to be carrying a lot of stuff with you since you're basically moving. You're moving your life to another country, right? So make sure you don't have to pay extra for baggage. Some airlines have student discounts or you know, extra baggage allow uh, you know allowances for students. I would look for those. And apart from that, it depends on where your college is loca located, essentially. All right. Okay. Um, the next question is uh, by Una: Is part-time jobs available, and can we get those easily? Uh, it's not easy, Una. I'll be honest with you. You have to go to the U.S. about one year early, and then you start looking for jobs. You really have to work your ass off to actually secure a job. But you can do it. It's not impossible as well. You, you go out there every single day in the morning. You get out there. You, you, you show up to places. You show up everywhere. You're at the library. You're at the you know, cash counters. You're at the canteen. You're everywhere. And you've sent your resume to everyone in the labs, in the, you know, uh, wherever you're going, essentially. You send it everywhere. Well, the chances are you will secure a job within one or two weeks. It's very well possible. All right. Uh, Pujita says, can we expect May slots for summer? May slots uh, were released in small batches. We only saw about, uh, you know, five to 10 slots open up at a time. And that was also at a specified time. It was kept on opening and then it stopped also for a moment. So it depends. We're always monitoring, but I can't say for sure because those were small openings and small openings are very unpredictable. May happen, may not happen. But most cases, you can be optimistic since it's still about a month away. All right. All right. Uh, the next one over here, Xperia says, bro, are you ignoring my comment? No, Xperia, it's not the case. There's just too many of the comments here. I'm taking one from here, one from here, uh, from Instagram and YouTube. That's why. Sorry about that if I missed yours. Um, Asta says, if it's a two-year course, how much funds I need to show to get my visa approved? Depends. If you have your I-20 in your hands, you can see exactly how much you need to show. Show a little bit more, 1.2 to 1.5 times of the i20 is generally the best way to go i would say optimal in most cases of course you can show the sky is the limit if you can show 10 times also you show that okay 
the next question Ashutosh posts is, how is TAMU for MSCS? TAMU is great. A lot of Indian population, though, if you're looking for more of an international climate, that's not something that you can uh, expect at, uh, at TAMU. But it's great, though. It's still a good university. And secondly, Texas, always a good investment. All right. Shubh Nakhvi asked, when will be the major opening? I, I already said it's going to be in May for the most part, right? But if you miss that, really, you know, you probably need to start really working towards uh, either monitoring very clearly and very up, very granularly, essentially, or you plan to defer, okay? Uh, Neha asked, how to start application process for PhD? Neha, you can message me. I'll uh, send you my phone number in the next story. It will be there. You You... Message me over there. I'll tell you exactly how you pro start for PhD. And we, if you do it with us, it's as good as a guarantee that you get 100% funding. There's been no case which has almost gotten less than 90% in any any case. Pratik asks, uh, are you, am I in Dubai? I'll be going to Dubai tomorrow, actually. Okay, next one. Akash says, with a TOEFL score of 90, can I get an admit for MPH in USA? MPH, I suppose you mean a master's in pharma right and uh, the answer is yes we've done a lot of cases for that score of 90 is the actually the minimum requirement of most of the good universities right so you will qualify but some universities have section wise requirements as well that's the tricky part so look out for that part that's all all right okay um let's see some other questions here now you're asking university specific questions guys uh, it's uh, it's great to hear about that, but at the same point in time, I cannot take on university-specific ones because for the most of the people here, you know, it's just one university name, right? So uh, I'm gonna go back to YouTube, and they ask um, how to get in touch with you. I want guidance too. I'm doing some internship in a service-based company. I want to target Jan and Take, but I have not started GRE TOEFL preparation. Is that possible? It's very well possible. If, for instance, we are doing your or taking care of your application process and improving your profile and you are doing your internship and preparing for a test we can work in parallel and create a synergistic effect if you'd like to get in touch with me take a look at my instagram page uh just search for uh yash Mit or mitra yash it's my surname first and then you know my full name mitra has a double t you search for that you find me you can message me or you can directly check out my story that would be faster because we would have you would have my number over there and you can just click and connect with me all right. I, I literally give out my personal number as good as personal number over there. It's always with me. All right. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly possible for you to get into spring, even if you have not taken the GRE and TOEFL or IELTS yet. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one. Thurman asks, is it worth spending so much on Ivy League universities? Is the ROI really there for MS and Comp E, computer engineering, I believe? Uh, Thurman, the answer is uh, straightforward. Yes. I don't have to think about it even for one minute. Trust me, it's a big yes. All right, guys, uh, the next one. Uh, again, Startronics asks, when are these slots going to be opening for F1 visa? Um, they're going to be opening, well, small openings are happen, happening right now as well. I think uh, two, three days back also, we got about two or three slots. They happen. But at the same point in time, if you're looking for a mass opening, that's in May. That's what we have gotten from the embassy as well. And that's what we are also targeting based on the last year's statistics. All right. Um, but don't don't miss it. Hi, Jeevit, how are you doing? All right, let's uh, see the next one is, is MS in data science good for USA without work experience? Uh, absolutely, don't even worry about it. Data science, as long as you're in decent location, you will have the return on investment you're looking for. There's nothing to worry about as such. All right, okay, let's see the next one here. Uh, Dropbox documents for F1 visa. Now, uh, Shivam, you can very easily do a Google search and get those documentation. I have a list as well on our website. I can pull up and I can show you, but at the end of the day, it's going to take like five minutes. I don't think that's going to be worth it, right? Uh, okay, the next one here is uh, Neha Virgo. She says, my bachelor's course is four years, but my I-20 shows five years. Is it by mistake? Well, in this case, see, I-20 shows five years, right? Generally, what happens is that the F1 visa is given out for about duration of five years. However, for the other bachelor's cases that we have done, generally the, the I-20 shows uh, four years as well in most cases. So I would suggest connect with your DSO once on that, right? Whichever whichever person you are in touch with from the university, just connect with them on email, just get this clarified. It's not a con under any circumstances. Even if you don't attend to this, 
it's not a con. It's only good that it shows longer, right? You can all, you can travel to the US more. It's only good for you. But yeah, you know, just in case you're worried about it. And also sometimes the explanation might be that, you know, some students, they actually do the courses a little bit slow, right? You can, you can choose to do it on a slower pace and you can choose to do less credits per year. So some people graduate in five years as well. It's possible, all right? Uh, let's see. Let's see the next one. On uh, YouTube here, IELTS versus TOEFL. Let's see, which one should I take? Oasis asks. So it depends on you completely. It depends on the university. I would say first thing is shortlist your universities. Very important. Shortlist them and then see which universities want which test. Create a column in the Excel. IELTS and TOEFL. Which one is accepted? Some universities don't accept the TOEFL. Some universities don't accept the IELTS. You'll have to check from there. As long as you have your shortlist, you're good to go. And also, depending on the country, if you're going to the US, take TOEFL, hands down. If you're going anywhere else, in most cases, the answer is IELTS. But things are changing, right? So again, do your research. All right. Um, so Raj Nantu says, I have got a few admits, but the university I want is telling that it may take end of May for the admit. What to do? Uh, Raj, I would say, get an I-20 from another university, start your visa process. It's not worth waiting till the end of May. I can assure you that you will be missing an opening. All right. Um, next one, next one, let's see. Um, right over here, Navneet says, hi, I'm planning to do a master's in data science. I'm back in Python developer. Which countries should I consider? European or US or Canada? Navneet, depends on your finances. Low finances, always go for Europe. Good finances, go for US and high return on investment. And if you're looking for PR, go for Canada without doubt, without even thinking about anything else, all right? So that's just a general overview, of course. We can go very deep into it. We can talk for an hour. Uh, you can book a counseling session with me. I usually have a counseling session every single day. Today, I did not keep even a single session, essentially, because I wanted to do the session with you guys. But yeah, generally, I always have one counseling session per day. I don't take more than that, one session per day. And uh, generally, in that program itself, I'm working with one-on-one, -on -one, one client, essentially. So if anyone is interested, they can always reach out on my number. It will be in the next story after this session ends. All right. Um, the next question that I have is uh, GRE or TOEFL mandatory, huh? Ankit says, well, Ankit, there are programs where you don't need to take the GRE. When it comes to the TOEFL or IELTS or an English test, you can even take the Duolingo. It's easier sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's not the best and not every university will accept it. So you really want to think about it. And if you don't, don't want to take even a single language test, then you can even go for <laughs> pathway programs. But uh, at the end of the day, again, you know, I don't think you would prefer that. Anyway, uh, let's see the next question here. Uh, sorry, YouTube's turn. Sorry about that. We only have about uh, two or three minutes left, guys. Just going to take a last couple of questions and then we're going to try to do this next week as well. We'll try to do as many as possible. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll connect more often from now on. All right. Okay. Uh, the next one over here is, uh, what is your opinion on undergrad in USA? Pradnesh, uh, Pradesh asks. Pradnesh. Sorry about that, Pradnesh. Uh, so for undergrad in US, Pradnesh, as long as you have the funds to support yourself, as long as you can get a good enough loan and your tuition is lower, right? Or you're going to a university which offers a good level of funding, which can happen, by the way. Target universities in Texas, target universities in states that offer education at a cheaper price and offer a lot of scholarships. It's very well possible. I think it's very well worth it. And uh, you would come out a changed man. I can tell you that. Okay. The next one, Starshake says that my profile was quite average and with confidence in things which you said in YouTube, I was able to answer. Well, I got my visa finally. Thank you so much, Sheikh. I am very happy to hear that. It's a pleasure. All right. Uh, I'll take one more from here. Raj Mahipat says, Hi, Yash, I received the admit letter, but not I-20. Can you help me with the visa slot? Absolutely, Raj. Just uh, message me directly on my WhatsApp number. It's probably in some of my past stories as well. I'll also post it in my next story after this one. And I'll personally respond to you on how we can help you. All right? Anyone who messages here. All right? So I'll try to do that wherever possible. Okay? And uh, guys, I think that's probably it for this session. But uh, we're going to be coming back. We're going to be doing this again next week. Hopefully, I'll try to do it as often as possible. I'm going to be traveling to Dubai tomorrow. So let's see exactly when I can do it. But I will be certainly taking a look at uh, Instagram and YouTube both for the future sessions. Uh, people who are on YouTube can follow me on Instagram where I will be posting much more 
about when these slots are opening up. Whenever they open up, I try to post a story, by the way. I can be a little bit late sometimes because we're, the top priority is the people who are working with us. So we are sometimes in a rush to get those. But at the end of the day, I always try to post it here. I always try to even send the screenshots here as well to make you understand that it's genuine. All right. So hopefully that's it for this video. Uh, I will do it next time, guys. Uh, the next one. I'm sorry if I could not take up your question. I really mean it. I would do it next time. But uh, yeah. Thank you so much and connect with me on my WhatsApp. It's in the next story if uh, if your question is urgent and if you believe that we are as Wyamgrad, you know, we can help you. We're more than happy to help. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Take care.